I'm F R E E, fuck nigga free. That mean I ain't gotta worry about no fuck nigga cheat. And I get, no, what's the next part? And I'm S I E G L E G. In the window with my wretched L E G. Let's go! Another episode! Hey! What you say, I saw and I see what you did there, friend. You did, did you like that? I did, that was good, that was good. Okay, so I got really upset. Um, like a couple weeks ago because somebody called me an influencer. Mm, and what is you? I'm a mogul. Mm, what is you? I'm a mogul. Hold on. Huh? I'm a mogul. I know that's the crap. So I want to ask you, what do you think the difference between an influencer and an entrepreneur is? Because it's a very thin line and people seem to blur that line a little bit. So they, let's talk about it. They do what with the line? They blur it. Blur. B-L-U-R, bitch. B L I R is what I hear. Blur. Blur. Pray for me, guys, during this episode. <laughs> um, I, I will say what I think the difference is. When I hear influencer, I think of a flat, like the tummy tee, and your, your booty sitting on the counter, like mm -hmm. two for um, 10 sale. Yeah. yeah. I think an influencer has more to do with the looks and the lifestyle. Entrepreneurs really have that mindset. That's the first thing. We have a mindset, and we also have money. Entrepreneurs have money. Influencers sometimes have a lot of clout, not a lot of cash. So that's just my my thoughts on that. And I will say with that too is a lot of influencers have so much clout, but they don't know how to capitalize. True. It's a C, but it's the wrong C. And I'm not throwing up crips because I don't gangbang. True. But a C for clout and not a C for cash is just very, it, it, it don't make sense to me. And to touch on something that is a very sensitive topic, but I do think it needs to be brought to the forefront um and this is with all due respect this is no disrespect and this is with much gratitude um jay versace's mom just passed away so Aww. rest in peace to his mom but he did have to create a gofundme for her funeral and on twitter it was a lot of backlash from that like don't send him money from for his mom's funeral or whatever whatever because he has like i think like four million followers on Instagram and he also just received a Grammy but Grammys and Instagram followers don't equal money and I feel like that situation definitely showed that to the world and shed a light on that friend okay first of all rest in peace yes. okay and now but this is something that we need to touch on because black creators yeah. are not receiving checks so if I can intervene and just say he need money for a funeral Yes. Don't funerals cost like 10, 20 bands? I don't know how much the funeral cost, but the GoFundMe was for 30000 <laughs> Keep <laughs> breath. Because, and I'm not laughing at that. It's, I'm laughing. It's a I'm not chuckle. laughing. It's I'm a not, yeah, chuckle. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Shit. Okay, so let me just say this. When you have following mm -hmm. and you're known and for a being, Grammy. Yeah, and you're known for being funny. A lot of times you do stuff because it's a good look and not because it, you could take it to the bank. True. You can't take a good look to the bank. You know what I'm saying? And that is happening with a lot of these comedians on Instagram right now because I can name five off the top of my head that have been around making us laugh for years, years. Mm -hmm. but have not been taking their ass to the to, bank. To the bank. And, and I don't want to laugh if I can't cash out. You yeah, know what I'm, saying? I'm not doing it for the clout. I'm doing it for the cash. And we'll talk about that later on in the episode, too. We'll talk about that later on in the episode. <laughs> so do you want to take us to church chat? Um, yeah, so let's talk about it, you guys. <clears throat> it's summertime, and service providers are stuck in the, you know how I feel about salon suites. <laughs> they stuck in their salon suites. No tea, no shade, no harm, no foul. But it's like, what can they do to just enjoy the sunlight a little bit more? Mm -hmm. And you know, when they do finally do get a break, they be like, I'm booked up from the 5th through the 16th. Yeah. It's like, girl, so now your money just going to stop for the 5th through the 16th? True. So, friend, what you think we could tell them? I think that this goes on to talk about what we talk about in most of all of our episodes, and that is trading time for money. Facts. If you are trading time for your money this summer, I want to challenge you to figure Figure out how to not do that, like how to create passive streams of income. And we talk about that in our eight-week intensive, which is coming up. We mm -hmm. have an, an accelerated exit plan that will help you exit from behind that chair all summer 2022, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and so on and so forth. <laughs> and, and moving forward. Yeah, and moving forward. And we also have the exit planner. So hopefully that is out and in your hands by 
the summertime, by the, the, by the middle of the summer, yeah. so that can help you, you know, not trade so much time Facts. for money. And you got to do the work, too. You mm -hmm. know, you can't just get in information and be like, okay, so I'm about to really, you know, scale myself up and I'm going to mm -hmm. start. No, you got to actually put that work in because, friend, they don't see the nights that we lay low. Like, Woo. we can enjoy the summer because we, we didn't enjoy regular days. We don't enjoy shit, bitch. We at work right motherfucking now. Hello. Hello. Entertainment of day at. Episode two. This, th this is the episode. Yeah, we shot two episodes today. So, we are, we work all day. Uh, we have a lot of stuff going on. So, my question for you would be, what's the hardest part about being in business with somebody? Because we own Beyond the Chair together. And Beyond the Chair is not just one business. It's mm -hmm. a, an umbrella. Yeah. But we have businesses up under it. Um, I will say for us, we're friends first. Mm -hmm. So even like, and I think we do, we do good at separating the two. True. So even when we are at odds on the business perspective, as friends, we're never at odds. So True. it's like, I'll call you to talk about something personal and leave the business out of it. And then when it's time to talk about business, we'll be like, Tay, girl, listen. Yeah. When it comes to business, we do always insert our team. We'll be like, talk to Yams, talk to Tay, talk to this person, talk to that person. So mm -hmm. I feel like. That's the best line of communication. Yeah, facts. Because I was in business with somebody before, but we were never friends first. So we mm -hmm. didn't have that relationship or understand each other outside of business. But with you, I get you on a personal level. So mm -hmm. then it's like, if we are at odds at work, then I could just call you back. Girl, it's a phone about something else, and True. we'd be cool. So. But the thing about it is, how did you find that trust in your heart after going through such a bad business breakup to be able to still go in and give me your full 100% trust. I don't know if you trusted me 100%. No, I didn't. Yeah, but it felt we got like bank it. accounts and shit together. Yeah, Social but Security numbers. how did you come in, like, after, and this was, like, in the midst of a breakup, a mm -hmm. business breakup. How did you come in mm -hmm. still with a, a, a pure heart, you know? I think because as your friend, I hear the things that you go through with other people, and you always look within first. I do. You do. I mean, you're a big baby sometimes. You know, no, no, no. But I accept it as your friend, so it's like as your business partner, I'm going to accept that too. But I think you, oh, friend. Don't start that shit, bitch. <laughs> no, Don't but, start. But you do go within first, so I know that you never mean any ill intent towards anybody. You've never spoke any bad on anybody. Yeah. Um, so I know you wouldn't speak bad on me. And then, too, like I said, we're friends first. So if we if all this shit burn tomorrow, we still going to laugh about I, I always told her I would rather sell beyond a chair and take our cut and go our, I mean, still be friends instead of, like, trying to hold on to this yeah. and go our separate ways. But, too, I also see how you move with your team, and we have the same type of, um, we boss the same. True. Yeah. So that I think that's good. So backtracking just a little bit to the Jay Versace situation and how clout does not equal cash. Let's talk about how social media, especially Instagram, the algorithm has been so off. Girl. Everybody been hiding their likes. Girl. I've been hiding my likes. Girl, you been hiding immediately. Your life. Immediate cut. I start out hiding like girl immediately now. <laughs> and if it do good, then I show my like. If it and what's good, good now? Cause good used to be like five thousand likes for me. Now I'd be like, girl, two thousand. I'm lucky. A thousand, and I'm lucky. Like it's it's really bad. But I feel like Instagram has been shadow banning black creators, mm. and they haven't been paying black creators. So mm. how do you feel about that whole thing? Um, I think my mind just goes to, okay, do I need to create a comment pod where we all just kind of comment in, like, each other's photos? And then, two, I think my thing is to get out there more. So you got to have mm -hmm. multiple streams of, or multiple ways for people to find you. So, right. like, if you're trying to go to Walmart and the road's closed, there's a detour. Mm -hmm. So it's like, my thing is, okay, I can't just be found on Instagram. So you, you've you been pressuring me to take TikTok more serious. Yes. I've been trying to do so. Mm -hmm. And then even, like, YouTube. So just finding multiple streams and multiple ways for people to find me. So if Instagram is playing on my name, mm -hmm. then you can still find me on YouTube and, you know, other platforms. I think that's, like, we got to lead with the solution. True. And not, and not focus so much on a problem. Because, mm -hmm. you know, me, I'm like, Trishana, are you posting? Post, post, post. You be yeah. like, that's not good for my algorithm. Man, fuck this algorithm. Girl, but, you know, you be posting flyers, and my audience don't like uh, flyers. But I think you do good how you do your carousels. I yeah. really, like, admire how you do your carousel. Thank you. I be trying. I be like, oh, let me be. <laughs> and social media is a job. I be like, let me be strategic. Please. And, I, and I'm a very strategic person. Mm -hmm. I think that's like one of our strong suits with Beyond a Chair is that I am strategic. And you're mm -hmm. strategic in, in numbers in, in that way. But when it comes to other things, I'm strategic in that way as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, I got a question for you. Okay. So I seen in an um, Instagram post recently, someone asked... I want to say Jack Harlow. Okay. If he would have sex with one of his family members for money or something. I don't want to get mixed up. What the fuck is this? 
the question is, how far will people go for clout? I've heard somebody say, uh -huh. how far would you, would you have sex with a family member or a cousin for a billion dollars? And I heard somebody say that their goal, allegedly Jack, that their goal is to make sure their family is taken care of for life. So the question is, how far will you go for clout? They do anything for clout. They do anything for clout. She don't. Is, yeah, that's that. That was the word. They do anything for clout because what? I, I wouldn't fuck a family member knowingly that is my family. What if member. it's like twice removed, uh, brother, cousin, sister, nephew? It could be once removed, and I'm fucking. You is for the building. <laughs> <laughs> Fred, we just said we wasn't doing anything for clout. That ain't clout. That's cash. <laughs> this is it's a difference between clout and cash, guys. Okay, what I will say is it was just a situation that happened. And I was very mad because it was a clip that went viral, but it went viral based upon the headlines that somebody wrote about us. Mm -hmm. A couple of people wrote about us, so it kind of geared the audience in a negative connotation. Mm -hmm. And when that was happening, I said, Trish, how can we capitalize off of this situation? I will want the cash. I don't want the clout. Granted, he got about like 30,000 extra followers. Off of us. Off of us in this situation, mm -hmm. but we got 60,000 extra dollars. Hello? And what did he, what did he call us? He called us influencers. And he said, influencers don't want a man with, with a job. Yeah. No, was, bitch. We was, don't want you. We're entrepreneurs that make $100,000 a month. Minimum. Like, minimum. And, and that's a bad month. So, Thanks. yeah. Um, next thing. Let's, let's go to top topics after that. Because, baby, I'm going to just leave it right there. I don't even want to play with nobody no more. Play with your mammy. Facts. Hope. Don't play with your life, bitch. Hello. Next. So what what I want to bring up to you guys is the owner of Honey Pot. So she recently got a lot of backlash because she sold her. She's company. no longer the owner. In fact, she Founder. sold her. Yeah, mm -hmm. and she sold the company, and it looks like they changed the ingredients. Now originally it was really for like um, black people. Black and pussy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, yeah. Trishana's mom. Yeah, yeah. You know I don't like that word, and my uh, mama don't either. Uh, and she be like, "Tell your friend, cause." But anyway, mama, close your ears. So she's getting a lot of backlash. But how do you feel about this? From a, as a businesswoman to another businesswoman, do you feel like she sold her soul or did it for cloud or whatever the case may be? Because I think if you're not a business owner, you look at it as a negative thing. But how do you look at it? I look at it in two different ways because she is a black woman mm -hmm. with a black coochie. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and the people that she serviced were black women mm -hmm. with black coochies mm -hmm. who were suffering from BV, like myself, yeast mm -hmm. infections, like myself. Mm -hmm. All of the things that women go through down there, she experienced that. So she created that company for us, mm -hmm. by her. Mm -hmm. So when she sold the company, I think she should have sold it with the integrity and with the understanding and what what she brought the company in with. Do you get what I'm saying? However, one more thing. When I'm going into business, I'm always creating businesses to sell the business. So to sell the business was not wrong. But I think she should have still led with the same heart that she came in with for our pussies. But, friends, speaking of the billion dollars that we were talking about for clout, if mm -hmm. somebody said, here's a billion dollars for your business, and you don't get to dictate how it's ran, you're going to steal that motherfucker for a billion dollars. I will, but I at least would have did a press release. Shit. I think she Okay, okay, press release. I think she owed the people an explanation. But this is what my mama always taught me, too. You don't get attached to anything. Mm -hmm. So it's like you built it up to sell it. So you sold it. So I think it's the small-minded people like, she, she's not for us anymore. Mm -hmm. She's not for black people. Yes, she is, but she's also about her money. True. And if y'all really rock her the way y'all say y'all did, y'all be like, I'm proud of her on a, instead of bashing her for selling her company. Now, I will say there's a Chinese restaurant locally in my um, town mm -hmm. that I really, really love, mm -hmm. and they sold it, and now the food is disgusting, and yeah. I would never go back again so i can understand how you feel like the quality is different however she made her money and that's the goal as a black woman it is but she could at least gave us a heads up as a black woman to a black woman i say fuck it you say fuck it i say integrity but i mean i guess that just is whatever way you want to tip the scale um but my question for the audience, well, their question to me always. Mm -hmm. I was in the coaching business for so long, the Instagram coaching business. I was teaching marketing and branding. Mm -hmm. I left that business to pursue podcasting and to pursue everything that we have going on. But what coach can you trust? That is a big question. What if you just say, cut off the lights? Cut off the lights in here, baby. I, what coach can you I was going to say, I'm looking for. You went, you went white on me, friend. Oh, sorry. Ooh. <laughs> but what coach can you trust? Um, while coaches are popping up every day and every night on Instagram, you as the, the I don't know what you want to call it, the consumer. Coaching, yes, or the, the consumer. The coachy? 
Yeah, the coachee. <laughs> you as the coachee um, or the consumer have to do that research on your own. When I tell you these coaches are popping up day and popping up night and they're just Googling stuff or taking another coach's course. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and, and can I say something on that? Yes. I got a drink to this. My issue with people coaching and coaching and coaching and coaching, mm-hmm. they be trying to tell people it's so hard and not everyone could do and it. It's not. Bitch, as you being my coach, I don't need you to make me feel scared. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, if they make you feel scared or they tell you to do something less than what they're doing, do not trust in them. True. I, I had to rip somebody into shreds and pieces on Instagram because he told his audience, and I'm not going to tell you guys it's going to be easy, and I'm not going to tell you guys you can actually do it because only a few of you are going to be able to. Like, bitch, don't do that. Why are you trying to, how are you trying to empower me, but then still steer me away at the same time? And and I see a lot of people also prey on people's um, insecurities. True. And they use God to make their money. And mm-hmm. I don't like that. Mm, I do not like that. And that's a different conversation for a different day. But what coach can you trust? My advice to you would be do as they do, and not, not as, as they, they say. say. Yes. Instagram is a lot of smoke and mirrors. I know a lot of people who, who are selling fluff. I know a lot of people who are selling motivation. Mm-hmm. On people will charge you for motivation, and I don't even like motivation. I don't want motivation. I want money. Facts. Because I'm not going to be motivated all the time. And there's some days I know I don't want to do it. Mm-hmm. I just need discipline, and I need the right steps to take. Like, True. don't try to get me goosebumps and crying so you can take my money. True. And, and then. That's- and that's what these coaches be doing. And they play on the vulnerability of people who are not financially stable. Especially you a single mama. Yeah. And you and, 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 and mm-hmm. what would Jesus do? And what would God do? And if you only had $7, and you can take $7 and no. turn it into okay. $70. And this is another scheme that they've been doing. They've been getting y'all funding to fund their class with the money that you don't even have. And with that, let's move on. Then they got to pay all this shit back. Huh? Then they still got to pay it back. And with that being said, baby, let's move on. I'm going to take a shot to the people who were smart. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, tequila Truths, baby. Speaking, wait, before we go to Tequila Truths. All right. Go back to Top Topics. Okay. Go back to Middle It, Middle It. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of somebody who's smart, I don't want to move on to Tequila Truths without shouting out my girl. She's been very smart. You want me to take my shot now? She's been very smart in the game. So shout out to Sierra Glam Shop. Mm-hmm. Like I really want her mm-hmm. to come on the show so bad mm-hmm. because my favorite story of hers is when she was working in a shop and they repo her car mm. while she was doing hair. And she had to act like it wasn't even her car. Really? But from there, yes, from there she has grown multiple businesses. She's on reality TV. She... And she's thorough. She's very thorough. She's very thorough. She's very dedicated. She's very consistent. And she got the look, and she she be putting that shit on. And she don't just go for the clout. She go for the cash. So but for that, shot to our girl Sierra. Shout out to Sierra. You gonna drink the whole thing or you sipping? Cause I'm you trying. you was ready to sip. I just watched you. Shot. 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 Mm. Proud of you. We the only people. I hope my trainer don't watch this. <laughs> we the only people I know who chase our alcohol with alcohol. I hope my trainer don't watch this episode. Anyways, uh, today we want to play a game for Tequila Truths, and if we get it wrong, we have to take a shot. I'm going to take a sip of Bel Air, because baby. Uh, but we're going to play Who Styled That Wig? So today we have <laughs> Arrogant Tay, Alonzo Arnold, Tokyo, Tokyo. Styles. And Jonathan, we love Jonathan. That's your, yeah, I was about to say, that's your best. That's my ever. boy. So we have to guess. Okay, so who's first? I mean, what, what style is first? Mm. I think Arrogante. Who styled that? I feel like Alonzo did that. All right, I got Tay. She got Alonzo. Why you, why you got, got Eric? Arrogante, that's mm-hmm. his color. Okay. Who's right? Okay. It's Arrogant. It was Alonzo? Alonzo did? You got to sip. Every time I'm right, you got to sip. You don't got to drink something right now, but you got to sip. It was you, Alonzo. You know how I feel like Alonzo they did that? They tried to trick me with the color. No, let me tell you why I think Alonzo did that. Because I be thinking Alonzo do them half. He love a good ponytail. But that was Tay's color, though. You get what I'm saying? Take a shot, friend. A little sip. All right, bring in the next one. Get her drunk. Jonathan mm. did that. <laughs> I was about to say Jonathan. This was, easy, this was an easy one because that's his girl. Mm-hmm. And you want to know what this tells me? Hmm. Customers thrive in consistency. Mm. That goes with Brandon because if you could see her and know that Jonathan did her hair, his Brandon on point. Facts, facts. His and Brandon that color was really beautiful, Jonathan. That was. All right, we sober on this one. 
Tokyo did that one. Tokyo did that. You know what about Tokyo, though? Tokyo is from my hometown, Omaha, mm -hmm. Nebraska. So, Omaha, big Nebraska, stand up. Shout out to Tokyo. Love Tokyo. And you know what? I've actually watched Tokyo from just an adolescent. What does that mean? A kid? Okay. I didn't ever know. I just want to say that. I watched Tokyo as an adolescent go from a dancer. because he. word? <laughs> He used to be like a dancer, like he had a dance team, mm -hmm. and then he moved out of town, and then he just started building his business, and now he's like a bomb celebrity stylist. So mm -hmm. it's just, I love bumping into him, uh, and just amazing. Uh, amazing. Amazing. And you want to know what else is amazing? Our BIP all access pass into our freaking lives. Do you hear me? What's BIP, friend? A BIP is a backstage inclusive pass. Mm -hmm. um, and we definitely want to invite you all to be a part of our Backstage Inclusive Pass. So if you want to be a VIP, what comes with it, friend? You get to know first about our guests that are coming. You get to talk to our guests first. You get to ask them exclusive questions. You get exclusive tips. You get to go live. So when we all set getting ready mm -hmm. and we be doing outfit changes and stuff, yep. you get to be here with us. Mm -hmm. And you get to get in our close friends. My favorite part, though. Is them being able to ask questions to our special guests before they even come in. Because sometimes we don't know what y'all want to know from the people. So y'all will know exactly who's coming in. Y'all get to ask some questions. It's only six ninety nine, mm -hmm. And the link is down below in the YouTube bio. You can only get it here. It's not in our um, social media bios or anything like that. And we are still on tour. And get it now, too, before the price go up. Yeah, the price will go up. Facts. <laughs> Anyways, guys, uh, we're going to end this episode right here. But before we end, we do want to just insert a clip of us being on tour. We have 10 more cities that we want to go to this year. Mm -hmm. And what do you have to say to the people? I just want to say come learn, come get some gaming, come shake hands and just network. Show us the clip, guys. See y'all later. Seem like every cat ain't gotta maintain the cap You can make change, don't change for that Tell the whole truth, get paid for that Bet you never fall off, you was made for that You gotta be who you really 